Okay, so today we'll be playing a mono blue cauldron deck. And the goal of this deck is to use its key card, the Agatha Soul Cauldron, to uh, generate a bunch of advantages uh, using creatures that we put into the graveyard and potentially going infinite, making infinite mana and uh, taking your opponent out that way. This is a deck that I heavily based off and first saw played in the uh, Magic World Championship uh, last year. And it came in 20th place and it was uh, made by Philippe Garou. But let's uh, jump right into the deck. So as I mentioned earlier, the main piece at play here is the Agatha Soul Cauldron, which is a two mana value artifact that exiles a card from a graveyard each turn and uh, puts a 1-1 counter on a creature if that card that we exiled was a creature and then gives our creatures with 1-1 counters all the abilities of the creature cards exiled with the Soul Cauldron. So it's pretty specific, but uh, we definitely take advantage of it with some cheap sort of creatures that have abilities that we could easily abuse. But to get to that point, we're also using another crucial card to our strategy, which is the four copies of Training Grounds that we run. And this is a one man enchantment that uh, discounts all of our creatures activated abilities. Um, it can to lower them to less than one, but you'll see that uh, they're cheap enough often that we get enough out of uh, discounting them by one or two so that we could just, you know, potentially infinite. So with our two build around cards out of the way, uh, let's get into some of our early curve. We run two mana dorks of sorts. Uh, there's the two copies of the Enigma Jewel that we run as a sort of way to ensure our combo. So if our main win condition, which is uh, shooting our opponent in the face, which we'll get into a little later, but if that win condition gets removed from our deck somehow, then we could look to uh, sink a bunch of our mana into the Jewel and lock our opponents out of the game through that instead. And alongside the Jewel, as our other uh, more important mana dork is the Omen Hawker which uh, for this one, it's actually a creature, meaning that we can get its ability under the Soul Cauldron and is one of our components for the infinite mana that we can produce. The other component is the Sleep Cursed Fairy from Wilds of Eldrain that has an ability that untaps it for two mana. And as we mentioned earlier, we are also running Training Grounds, which discounts this to one mana. And uh, alongside the activated ability of the Omen Hawker, then you can make infinite mana this way by adding two mana from the omen hawker and then paying one mana to untap the fairy since it's discounted by the training grounds however making infinite mana isn't enough to win a game so you actually want to find ways to uh you know mill your opponent out or deal enough damage to kill them or lock them out of the game whatever it is you're trying to win through and some of the ways we use are the four copies of Rona Herald of Invasion as a card that taps and draws discards and could turn into a big creature that does a whole bunch of stuff, but we don't usually aim to flip her since her draw discard is a lot more valuable. And notably, this is another card that we could put under the Soul Cauldron and give a bunch of creatures draw discard and make it easier for us to find any combo piece that we might be missing. And the other sort of draw discard outlet that we have is the Hypnotic Rifter, which is a one mana value one two. And it has an ability that you pay three to have it connive. And as we mentioned earlier, Training Grounds, another card that uh, is getting discounted here, means you know we're getting even more value out of our combo pieces. And the Grifter in and of itself could become your own win con since it can grow really fast. Having like a turn one Grifter into turn two Training Grounds means you're already paying one per one mana value per potential grifter one one counter so it could get out of hand really fast i mean you could go turn one omen hawker or turn one jewel into turn two grifter and turn two training grounds and you already have two mana to start growing your grifter so yeah this this creature could get out of hand quite quick and is usually a must sensor for opponent and thankfully, seeing as it is a creature, if it does get answered, then you could just put it under the Soul Cauldron and give the uh, conniving ability to another one of your creatures. Some of the interaction we run to protect our overall game plan and disrupt uh, our opponent's game plan, which might be faster than ours, are the uh, copy of Witness Protection that we run, 
which is a good way to just deal with any big scary creatures. Notably, this turns their shield rate off, so we don't get uh, burned down for drawing discarding with our uh, Rona and uh, Hypnotic Rifter. We also run a copy of Spell Pierce as a cheap counter spell that could uh, disrupt any scary non-creatures that our opponent puts on the stack. We run two copies of the Mirror Shell Crab as something I was curious in trying here since we could pretty easily cast it for its channel cost uh, using the Omen Hawker or the Jewel turn one and essentially making it kind of like a stronger spell pierce that takes us off from some mana but gives us more flexibility in the form of being able to actually target creature spells or even abilities in case it's relevant. I run a copy of the Colossal Sky Turtle and I pair this up with Shigeki Jukai Visionary as a way to fetch cards out from the graveyard if we have infinite mana. Uh, we could also pair this up with the Enigma Jewel as a way to lock our opponents out in case they take us off Soul Cauldron, so we could have a way to infinitely recur cards in our graveyard. And finally we have one copy of the Realm Scorcher Hellkite as our main way to end the game, giving our creatures what is usually a one mana ping, and we just burn our opponent down making infinite mana and pinging them to the face. In the sideboard, we have three copies of Slip Out the Back as a way to protect our creatures against removal heavy decks. We have an extra copy of Spell Pierce to further disrupt our opponent's plans. Three copies of Witness Protection so as to give us more options to deal with those scary creatures. A copy of Sword of Once and Future as a, a different way to deal with those removal heavy decks in that we can give our creature constant protection. We run four copies of Malevolent Hermit as an excellent board in against control matchups. Two copies of Fading Hope as a way to disrupt uh, fast plans or perhaps plans that tend to target creatures, potentially disrupting like a buff spell or something like that. And finally, we have an extra copy of Mary Shell Crab as a more diverse counter spell as opposed to the spell pierce that I mentioned earlier. So, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching. All right. Match one of the day, on the play. Finding a keepable hand with an early trading grounds into a turn two Rona that could hopefully put away this uh, second grounds. We also have a Cavern of Souls to fight against some of the control decks uh, that I've seen a lot on the ladder and seeing blue might indicate something like blue white control. So happy to have this Cavern of Souls. And yeah, I'll go ahead and play out the Rona. And we do see blue-white, but we see a Strooner from our opponent, meaning that they're on some sort of blue-white tempo deck. With that in mind, they will most likely be playing out a creature, crewing their Strooner and swinging in, meaning that we won't be blocking with Rona anyway, so I'll go ahead and draw a discard with her. Ooh, finding the fourth trading grounds is a little awkward, but uh... Let's see how I play this. I can name Chiron of Souls on almost anything. So I'll go ahead and choose Wizard, seeing as we already have a Wizard in hand, and this could also hit the Sleep Curse Fairy. And yeah, I'll just go ahead and pass it over, I suppose. I could play a second Rona, sacking our first one, but untapping her and draw discarding again, getting rid of this other trading grounds, but hopefully the opponent doesn't have too fast of a game plan. Maybe they'll just play something like a wedding announcement or just simply pass the turn, which is also pretty nice. But sadly, naming wizard means we can't get the Hypnotic Rifter out here too easily. So I'll start off by draw discarding with Rona, looking to get rid of more of these trading grounds. And finding a Merix is pretty nice. On pass, there's a stop from opponent, meaning they might have something like a Virtue of Loyalty in hand. So I'll go ahead and try and resolve this Hypnotic Grifter. If we get it countered, it means we're just getting stuff off the board. And we won't have a draw discard outlet uh, with the trading grounds, but it does resolve. So I think we're in a pretty good spot here. We've got three connives with the Hypnotic Grifter right here. They might even swing in with the Schooner and let us connive a bunch with our Grifter and uh, get a good block into it. 
let's let them explore. They find a spyglass iron on top and they put it in the graveyard. Ooh, I should have actually buffed up our Grifter first, but regardless, I think we'll be making it to four power here anyway. Putting away the fourth training grounds. And I think I'll put away this backup Rona as well. Or perhaps the witness protection isn't as important, but finding a second Omen Hawker means I'll just put that one in the bin. And yeah, I'm thinking witness protection isn't going to be too relevant here. And our opponent uses Tishana's Tidebinder here on our last trigger, meaning that their uh, boat does live. But our Grifter, I think, we got to four toughness anyway. And I suppose I'll go ahead and play the Omen Hawker here, but not before I draw discard with Rona, hoping to find another blue source so that I can hold up this Mirror Shell Crab. And this run is a little awkward. So I think using Witness Protection on the Dishana's Tidebinder here does not give me back my Hypnotic Grifter. And next turn, our opponent will be on 4 mana. They might miss off the top, seeing as they have to put that Spyglass Iron away. So they are a bit away from the Virtue of Loyalty, which is probably what we want to counter the Bolts with Mary Shell Crab, because otherwise they'll just have tempo options that we're not too worried about countering, so I'll play out the Omen Hawker. At least you have a good blocker with the Grifter here. And that's about as best as opponents could have gotten with the Tishana's Tidebinder, because even if they had used it on an earlier trigger, we could have activated the Grifter twice again in response. Meaning it would have gotten to 3-4 power toughness anyway. And our opponent takes our turn. They might look to swing with the Schooner once more. Now it could be right to block both with the Grifter and the Hawker here, but having a, a build, having access to the uh, two mana from the Hawker could be really relevant in getting this Mirror Shell Crab counter off. Having an uninteractable counter from this spot is really nice. Our opponent can't really counter this in response, and I guess they could have a Tishana Sidebinder, but if we're countering something, it means they tapped out and are not really in the best spot to Tishana Sidebinder. And our opponent finds a wedding announcement off the top and keeps it there, and they play in the land for turn. Playing out of Denik is quite scary, but thankfully we have this Witness Protection ready to take care of him. I'll start by draw discarding with Rona, looking to put away this second Rona in the bin. Finding an island isn't too bad. I'll just, yeah, I'll play this island out and look to get them off the Denik. And thankfully we have access to our graveyard once more. I'll just keep passing it over to our opponent. Look for answers with Rona. Ready to counter with our Myrix. And a Virtue of Loyalty will make a 2-2 Knight. We'll let that resolve. If all our opponent does here is try and go for Wedding Announcement, we'll be happy to counter that and uh, keep our health high. Ooh, but they swing with a team. Yeah, I'll look ahead to blocking this Tishana. And I'll keep everything else on the board. Oh, I could have I could have sworn that they would have a Wandering Emperor there to buff out their Tishana, but they give us our Grifter's Conniving back, and opponent packs it up. Sweet. Yeah, we were just gonna pop off of the Grifter there, connive a whole bunch of times. Oh, and I can't. Oh, and I guess our opponent just packed it up. GG's. Match number two on the draw this time with a pretty capable hand. Got plenty of lands and plenty of way to plenty of ways to find our combo pieces, so look forward to keeping this. And we see a scrub on the play. So I'll run out our fairy early on. Unlikely to get this removed. And I'll lead with consider here. See what we find off the top. Finding <laughs> What is this? 
7 lands in our 20 land deck is a little awkward. And the Emerge Shell Crab isn't the worst follow up. I'll just go ahead and play this urn and pass it over to the opponent. And another consider isn't too bad. But seeing as our opponent had no place, it's a pretty good sign since we can now hold up this Mirror Shell Crab. So they might be going for the Charge of the Mites, which we will happily counter. Meaning that their only place for their first three turns was a Scroll, which is pretty good when you're versing off against a tempo deck such as this. So now our Sleep Cursed Fairy is definitely a good potential option here. I'll lead with the side of hand though, see what we find. More land is not ideal. Two more lands, so that's been, good lord. Nine lands, half of our lands were in the top 15 cards of our library because this is a 20 land deck that is quite ridiculous but i'll just pass it over threaten untapping with our sleep curse fairy here and this could very well prompt their scrawl activation meaning that i guess we got to save on our mana and could find a better use for it with the consider and gets in for five poison and another land that's half of our lands in the top 15 finding a rona which we will make uncounterable through the use of cavern of souls and now we could also hold up this odawara as a way to stop their scroll from making their stuff unblockable and I'll go ahead and cast it now. See what they have on end step. Just a fading hope it is not too bad. So yeah, I think using the Odawara now is right. Well, I mean, I have to use the Odawara now considering our Rona getting bounced to hand means our Odawara is no longer discounted. So... I guess the scroll is a little less worrying. Oh, they, they can buff up their stuff though with the seed core. So I'll bounce the Crawling Chorus, dissuade them from swinging in with Skrull by threatening a block with a fairy. And opponent lets it resolve. Very possibly on Banff Colors, seeing as it's pretty easy to splash for the Rock Priest. And they'll run up the Chorus again. Swing with Skrull, we'll look to block it. This could very well indicate a second scroll, but we're not too worried about losing Rona. We'd rather just save up on not getting hit by poison. But yeah, we do see the follow up scroll. And yeah, I'll run out Rona again. Finding yet another land is always a bad sign, but gotta play with the hand you dealt. Even if that hand is extremely statistically unlikely. It is what it is. Oh, I'm in Hawk off the top. Means we can now hold up the Godfire alongside some uh, Merrick's lands. And I'll opt not to draw this card with Rona here since we want to preserve our blockers. And seeing a Merrick's from our opponent, we will respond by sacking our Godfire and looking to shoot down the scroll. But our opponent will protect it by bouncing it with Fading Hope. That's not too bad. Now this is quite awkward since our opponent has two seed cores and can buff up both of their creatures. Meaning we have pretty bad blocks here. Yeah, not much I could do. A Cauldron off the top won't do much. So I guess I'll take this. We are looking for the win next turn anyway, but they could very well have a proliferate effect here to just end the game. I think we need something like 
cauldron off the top alongside a grifter and we'd have a pretty good shot. So I'll lead with sleight of hand. Finding another Rona. Still have a good shot. Draw this card with Rona. Put away this Sleep Curse Fairy, I suppose. And I'll go ahead and look to play this Rona we just drew. Untapping our Rona. Draw discarding with her before she gets Legend ruled away. And finding a Spell Pierce will mean the end of this game. So let's pack it up and see how we're going to play this out. Uh, our opponent is just playing tempo with a lot of cheap spells to protect their creatures or more so to protect their game plan. Definitely running stuff like March of Swirling Mist in here and possibly the Rock Priest. Alongside with small creatures like Crawling Chorus and Skrull. So I think Witness Protection will put in quite a bit of work, turning off the Toxic on the creatures. And Fading Hope as a way to interact with them will put in some good work alongside the Spell Pierce and maybe the third copy of Mary Shell Crab. Slip out the back, I'm not too worried about. They're not really removing our creatures. Rather just bouncing them to hand. So I won't worry about that for now. Let's look at our cuts. I don't think we're looking for like some crazy late game with the Colossal Sky Turtle and Shigeki. So I'll cut those for now alongside the Enigma Jewel and the Urn of Godfire. Our opponent's not going to be disrupting our game plan too much, so we don't need to be we don't need our combo to be super resilient. And I'll also drop off the sleight of hands. Side of hand is usually my card of choice to cut compared to the consider since I have it in there as a way to draw through our deck if our opponent has a shield rid since side of hand doesn't technically draw you cards. So finding another hand with plenty of lands, I'll look to keep this. Surely we won't draw half our hat half our lands again. And we could use Zorona to start selecting through cards, but there we go, drawing another land. And our opponent follows up with a scroll of Sive. I'll start by draw discarding with Rona, finding another land. And yeah, I'll go ahead and play this Soul Cauldron. I'm running 20 lands, right? Yes, I am. 20 lands. And our opponent looks to Fading Hope Arona. We'll respond by draw discarding. Finding a Sleep Curse Fairy could be pretty good, but I'll drop a land for now, seeing as they're getting off, off the board. We want to run out a bunch of creatures next turn, potentially. Opponent gets in for one poison damage and plays out another scroll type. Yeah, I'll look ahead and just exile that fading hope. Finding a training grounds is pretty nice. Means we could play a whole bunch of stuff here. Yeah, I'll just play out our hand. Look to set up a game win next turn, assuming our opponent doesn't have removal for the soul cauldron. But our opponent hits us with the Annex Entry, meaning that they take us off. Oh, they take us off Rona instead of the Cauldron. That's interesting. But fair enough. And they'll play out a Crawling Chorus. Setting up a whole bunch of poison damage next turn is pretty scary. Ooh, but finding an Omen Hawker could mean the end here. Mm, still quite tricky. So I think the move is to play out the Omen Hawker, have it die next turn, put the Omen Hawker under the Soul Cauldron targeting the Fairy, meaning we have infinite mana, and then bounce the Odawara, or bounce the Annex Entry with Odawara, getting Rona back on the field, have her untap next turn, and draw this card with her, looking for another draw discard outlet. 
I think that'll be our best bet. Yeah, let's go with that. Or perhaps we could even double block the Annex Sentry and have them kill the Omen Hawker, giving us back Rona for free. And then we could bounce Rona, draw this card, or draw this card with Rona, bounce her, put her into the graveyard, and have her be our draw this card out with next turn. So yeah, let's try it out like that. I think that's a pretty solid plan. Oh, but I misplayed here. I should have kept three blue open to be able to untap our fairy. Oh, never mind. Agatha's Soul Cauldron means we could activate any color. But in the future, watch out for that. If you don't have Soul Cauldron on the field, it means you can only use your blue mana to untap fairy, meaning I should have named souls on advisor first and played the hawker out with it and then used the islands to untap our fairy. So opponent does swing here. I'll start off by untapping our fairy. And if we go and if we go with a double block plan, they will have five poison damage going in, taking us up to eight, meaning that they'd need to have exactly two ways to proliferate in their hand to win the game. But they could also just have a bunch of ways to target the creatures, meaning the rot priest would just finish us off. But I, I guess if they had marcher swirling mist, they would have used it already, or maybe not. I guess they have to swing in first. I mean, we're dead to a marcher swirling mist anyway. But if we block a little better, we're, le we're dead to less things. So I'll go ahead and do that and block like so. Forcing them to use whatever it is they're going to use on that Rot Priest now. Oh, but they use nothing, meaning they don't have any ways to give us more poison counters this turn. Or at least not way enough ways to give us poison counters so as to kill us. And a Jabo Duelist as follow-up means we can successfully put this Omen Hawker under our Sweet Purse Fairy. Making enough mana that we can untap this Rona, or yeah, well, return this Rona to the battlefield and untap with her. You know, I'll go ahead and bounce their sentry. Assuming that they don't have a removal spell seeing as they, or a protection spell seeing as they didn't use it to protect their uh, Rot Priest. And now we're looking to find another way to draw this card here. Finding a Mary Shell Crab instead will not do it. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose there's no way around this. Not enough blocks. Yeah, I would have definitely been right to block the Annex Sentry with our Fairy and our Hawker, prompting the Rona to get to come back. But I was just really worried about them having a way to poison us up. In hindsight, I'm not really sure why they attacked with the Rot Priest, but I guess it's because game was over anyway, if we didn't have any sort of outs. So I'll go ahead and pack it up. GG's opponent. Okay, match number three on the play. Happily take that. Finding a pretty good hand here. I'll lead with the Hawker and maybe follow that up with a Soul Cauldron. Or perhaps just holding up the Mary Shell Crab is pretty good. So go Hawker turn one with the Merix, play the Fairy turn two, using Cavern of Souls to name Wizard, ensuring a Fairy and a possible Rona on the field against Control. I like our odds there. So I'll get started. Lead with the Hawker. Opponent shows blue white and. Follows it up with a Crawling Chorus. So I might look to play the Hypnotic Grifter out instead. I'll name Human here. And pass it over to our opponent, holding up our Marishal Crab. And our opponent attempts to resolve a Scrub's Hive, which is honestly not too scary. I'll let that go through and opt to connive with our Grifter instead. Finding our blue source and putting a Sleep Cursed Fairy in the bin, which I think will be a little too slow for this matchup. 
And I suppose I'll follow this up with an Agatha Soul Cauldron. Holding up both the crab and the spell pierce in case we need it. And I'll just pass it over to our opponent, looking to connive some more with our grifter. Opponent plays out a seed core and looks like they're just going to pass it. So I'll go ahead and connive. Finding Arona is pretty good. I'll drop this land. I guess we could have dropped Rona and started to draw this card that way. But I'll happily just put the fairy under our Hakura. And your opponent looks to bounce the Hawker with Serum Snare, meaning that they lost out on a Proliferate. Which is not too bad. And finding a Training Grounds will possibly mean the game here. Yep, that should be the game, seeing as we can connive with the Grifter, put the Hawker in the graveyard, and make infinite mana. And opponent recognizes that. Yeah, we're just gonna draw this card through our entire deck here till we find a Hellkite, put it into the graveyard, play our second land, uh, make enough mana that we can shoot them down, uh, play out a backup Soul Cauldron, put the Hellkite under it, and shoot them down with the Grifter. So blue-white once more. I'll go with a similar plan, looking to interact with their stuff and looking to not draw all of our lands this time. And putting away our fancier combo pieces. Alongside the side of hand. Cool. All right. On to our second game on the draw this time. Finding both a hawker and a fairy, but a whole bunch of lands is a little awkward, so I'll look to mold this. And this is looking like a much nicer hand. I'll put away our Cavern of Souls. Uh, actually, they might have counter spells, so it might be better to keep this in hand. But even then, we still have a good enough hand, so I'll put this away. We'll definitely be able to resolve our Omen Hawker early on at the very least. Or perhaps it's better to resolve the Fairy, since we'll be able to untap it pretty quickly with the Training Grounds. But I guess, same thing. We could play Hawker into Training Grounds and Fairy and untap her quickly anyway, and have access to the Omen Hawker mana earlier on. Maybe holding up Spell Pierce is the better move. Ooh, but opponent has a really fast start with that Jawbone Duelist. So I guess we play out Rona here, look to start finding our combo pieces and force our opponent to tap their scroll for the unblockable. Since this way we could double block the duelist if they were not to give it hexproof. And interestingly here they left a blue open, possibly for something like the March of Swirling Mist or a counter spell of some sort. They'll hit us with a Lantern Flare as a removal spell. Sure thing. And swing into the Duelist. Giving it unblockability with Skrull. And they'll get in for 4 poison. Finding a Hypnotic Grifter is a little too slow here. But maybe it's right. Means we could get out the Training Ground next turn, but... And I guess we could also draw Discard with Rona. They're gonna be making their Duelist unblockable anyway. Looking to find land with this Consider. Finding Witness Protection instead is quite good since we could try and put this out to the duelist taking them off from four poison per turn but seeing as our opponent kept this yavi Maya coast untapped is meaning it's pretty likely that they have interaction but it seems like they don't letting our witness protection resolve turning off their poison creature and opting to bounce our rona instead
So we've slowed them down a whole lot with this witness protection, which goes to show how important a removal spell like this is for our deck. Buying us an extra turn or two could make the difference between us comboing or not comboing. And our opponents will get in here for another poison and bring us down to 15. Finding another land is always nice. Yeah, I'll go ahead and play the Grifter alongside Rona, I suppose. And look to start conniving a bunch next turn. Or maybe it's try to go training grounds now. Ooh. We did play land for turn. And this way, if I go training grounds, we could hold up a spell pierce. Yeah, I'll take that. And opponent goes for a bring the ending, which we will happily counter with spell pierce. Opening up the way for our training ground. But opponent is likely to get in for another 3 poison damage here, giving their stinger unblockability. But maybe, seeing as we'll have a bunch of draws with the grifter, we could find a way to possibly turn this stinger off. Maybe with another witness protection. I was saying stinger, I meant slaughter singer. Seeing as it's a poison creature, I thought maybe it was stinging, but... I guess not. Then I'll put this Sleep Curse Fairy away, seeing as it's pretty slow, and opt to use Consider here rather than uh, conniving with the Grifter since this looks at more cards. Put this land away and draw into a Marishal Crab. Now I could draw this card here, oh, but I guess we're pretty dead and we're forced to draw this card, so I'll go ahead and connive. And not finding an answer is sadly going to mean the ending of this game. Let's see what we find off the top anyway. And another Grifter will not have done it. Yeah, our opponent was just gonna make their Singer unblockable next turn and get in for another 2 damage. So... Hmm. Playing lots of small creatures. And that scrub is quite annoying. So maybe we look for a faster start, opting to put in the Jewel and the Urn of Godfire. Alongside the Sky Turtle maybe, as a way to interact with the creatures. And cutting out our Hellkite, we saw our opponent surrender as soon as we found that uh, infinite the other game, so maybe they'll do the same here. And even if they don't, we'll still be able to lock them out of the game. And what else on the cut? I think Spell Pierce did good, Witness Protection did good, Rain of Godfire will be good removal, hitting the Jewel will give us a way to win the game. I guess I'll cut a, I'll cut a Marishal Crab alongside a Consider, or perhaps alongside the second Marishal Crab oh, on the play this time. Finding a pretty good hand with lots of interaction as well as two combo pieces. I'll lead with our Fairy. Followed up with the training grounds that will be protected by a spell pierce, though I doubt that they'll hold up a blue here to counter our spell. Opting to play a venerated rock priest instead. When finding a grifter is also excellent here. Yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and play this and look to spell pierce whatever they try to play next turn if they were to play a uh, non creature spell. And this way we have a pretty good way to get in with our training grounds, start conniving a bunch, and finding our combo pieces. Opponent follows it up with a Seachrome Coast. And the Lantern Flare, our Grifter, which will happily respond with Spell Pierce. Finding our training grounds. And I'll start by conniving with our Grifter. Putting away this backup fairy and playing out our cavern of souls naming wizard naming wizard yeah means we'll guarantee our rona and i'll just pass it over to the opponent it would have been right there to play the cavern of souls first and keep our blue man up so that we could fading hope anything they try and play and it does end uh end up hurting us since we lose our grifter here but i'll connive with it once more Putting another Sleep Curse Fairy into the bin. Drawing into a Spell Pierce is not the worst. I'll look to play out Arona and hold up our interaction. 
maybe dissuade them from attacking by threatening untapping the fairy and blocking their uh, poison creatures. But I'd much rather hold up our interaction here. Hmm. But perhaps it could be good to untap our fairy since we definitely take care of the rot priest that way. Yeah, let's look to do that. And just block both of their creatures. But our opponent hits us with a Serum Snare, for which they'll pay two. Means we'll at least only get hit by two poison and have them be tapped out. So I'll start by draw discarding with Rona. Finding a witness protection is quite great. Yeah, I'll just keep what we have in hand. Play out the Sleep Curse Fairy and hit the Rot Priest with a Witness Protection, turning it off for the time being. And we do get hit by a Poison Counter, but I'm happy to not be threatened by something like a March of Swirling Mist ending the game. Notably, the Seed Core also still uh, buffs up their legitimate business person, so they can get in for quite a bit of damage here, and following it up with another Venerated Rot Priest is pretty scary. But I might just look to end the game here, conniving a couple times with our uh, Grifter. And I believe... Yeah, opponent played land for a turn, so if they try to replay this, Venerated Rot Priest will bounce the Annex Entry back to hand and look to end the game, since being faced with two Venerated Rot Priest now is pretty scary. But if they do have the March of Sorling Mists as their last card in hand, well, I guess that's not game just yet. They'd only be able to target one of their Rot Priests, meaning that's two poison counters up to eight and up to nine once we target this Annex Entry with our Fading Hope. Finding a fairy on top, or fourth fairy, sadly. Let's look to find some gas here. Tapping our Cavern of Souls to preserve our blue mana. And putting away this training grounds. Use up another mana. Finding a Colossal Sky Turtle could be pretty relevant. I'll put away the Spell Pierce. Draw a discard with Rona. Finding an Omen Hawker, and I'll happily put that in the bin and hold up our Colossal Sky Turtle here. Opponent has a stop of some sort, so they definitely have something they could play here. Uh, an Experimental Augury. will mean we will get proliferated up to 8. And puts us in quite a scary situation. It's unfortunate that we had to play against two banned poison decks in a row, seeing as this deck is pretty susceptible to tempo decks. I thought that this deck phased out from the meta and was hoping that avoiding decks like this could give us a pretty good shot. But so will Arena do. Yeah, I'll just bounce this sentry. Gives us the best shot. And our opponent has the Serum Snares follow up anyway, ending the game. Alright, match number four of the day. And I'm playing four matches today since our first one was a free win, and the other two were. Terrible matches paired up with terrible land draws that I would like to forget. So here we go, match four. <laughs> uh, finding a Broker's Hideout, turn one. An opponent is running 60 cards, meaning that this isn't necessarily CFD Sock's ramp list. I'll lead with a Omen Hawker. Another Broker's Hideout from our opponent means they're likely doing some sort of land shenanigans, quite possibly Reclamation. 
So with that in mind, I'll follow up with another Omen Hawker and hold off from playing this Rona just yet since we could instead hold up the Mirror Shell Crab counter. And a Slogurk the Overslime will happily put into the bin. Alongside a deserted beach is an interesting choice of land. I'll go ahead and play Arona though. Hold up our Odawara this time. And if our opponent plays something like the Analyst, then at least we have a good way to bounce it with Odawara, delay them from a turn. Drawing land for turn. Let's start by draw discarding with Rona and drawing another land, but this land has a Wincon attached to it, so that's pretty nice. And our opponent targets our Rona with Get Lost. Yeah, we'll let that resolve. So, Bant Colors and another Get Lost, sure thing. They show an Igonjo, meaning they're running a non zero amount of channel lands as well. And a Cosmic Rebirth to bring Slogurk back. We'll happily hit this with a Witness Protection. And swing another Might. Possibly prompting a block here. No blocks though. Means I'll just play our land and the first one we named on Wizard, so the second one we will name on Human. And I'll go ahead and play out our Soul Cauldron. Keeping our Odawara open. And potentially getting a Rona underneath this Omen Hawker. Opponent plays a Red and Realm Breaker. Making a 3 3. And swinging in with the team. Sure thing. Yeah, I'll look to start draw discarding here. Finding a Realm Scorcher Hellkite will be a pretty effective way to take care of this Realm Memory, this Red and Roll Breaker here. But I'll start off by using some maps here to potentially buff up our Phyrexian Might. We're pretty likely to not hit land, seeing as our deck runs such few lands, but then again. Okay, so Training Grounds is pretty excellent here. Means I could do something like this, draw discard. Playing land for turn, using this Merex for the blue mana to play out training grounds. And now we have five pings with our Hellkite. Which I think puts us in a pretty good spot. I'm debating on whether using those pings now. I guess otherwise they'll just draw with Ren and Railbreaker. So yeah, I'll go ahead and use those now. Hoping to dodge some sort of removal on Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Look to ping down this Ren and Realm Breaker. Get them off any potential draws and hopefully off their game plan. And an ossification to take care of one of our creatures is a little scary, but thankfully we have a backup Omen Hawker in the graveyard. So they take care of both of our creatures, but that leaves them at one card in hand and a Sleep Curse Various follow-up here is threatening to end the game next turn. Since we'll make infinite mana and shoot them down with the Realm Scorcher Hellkite. They really need an answer here. And this answer is not good enough since we can still make the Merrix on end step. Meaning we can hit this with Omen Hawker as well as the Fairy and making infinite mana.
and opponent sees the infinite and packs it up we go to game two so maybe this isn't a reclamation list and more like a controlly bent deck with like cosmic rebirth as a way to re reanimate stuff so i get the soul cauldron pairs up pretty well here giving us a good way to exile their stuff and i think we're good to keep the enigma jewel combo cards in since we want to be as consistent as possible here i think that we're not too worried about hitting too many creatures we only did see the slow Gurg, but they could certainly be running other stuff maybe like the nissa so i guess witness protection is warranted i'll run two copies of that alongside two copies of the spell pierce taking out two slide of hands and i think this this looks good enough for now opponents seem to have board wipes but we have good ways around them starting off with a pretty good hand Got one and a half Wincon, one of them being the Merrix and the half being our Rona alongside the Hellkite. Opponent leads with the Headquarters and follows it up with a Broker's Hideout, finding a White Source. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and play out this Merrix. Hold up our Marishal Crab and if they just pass the turn, we'll Merrix on end step and start clocking them that way. But seeing a Rom run in Realm Breaker instead, we'll happily counter that. Fighting a Soul Cauldron means we likely just play Rona out here, holding up the Odawara in case they have a board wipe here. And a temporary lockdown will do it. And yeah, I think our best bet is holding up the Rona, turning her to hand. Finding land for turn, sure thing. I'll play that alongside our cauldron and pass it over to the opponent. Sadly missing out on an untap from Rona, but getting our material onto the board is more important, I'd reckon. And a stone brain to hit our deck. If they name Omen Hawker here, for Sleep Curse Fairy, we're in a pretty tough spot. And they do hit the fairy. But we're not quite dead yet. We could certainly still lock them out of the game. Or at least start pinging them down with the Realm Scorcher Hellkite. First one named Wizard, second one named Human. And I'll pass it over to the opponent. Holding up the Marishal Crab, as well as Hellkite starting to ping them down. And our opponent looks to hit our Marex, which I will counter that. Taking them off a of land, <clears throat> taking them off a of land and Starting to find some gas with Arona here. I'll go ahead and exile this Hellkite now. Start clocking our opponent. Finding a Hypnotic Rifter is pretty good. Let's see what Consider does first. Ooh, and a Training Grounds. Means we could start getting a ton of damage out here. I'll keep the Grifter in hand just in case they. Um, remove Arona somehow and I'll just swing in putting them under a pretty fast clock so they'll get a 1-1 one -one here but we'll get to keep dealing damage with Rona. and I will go ahead and start exiling stuff from their graveyard they most likely have a way to recur this land, these lands so I'll happily get them out of there for now and I'll just pass it over we could be very dead here to a farewell but I'll just look to buff up our grifter 
and keep pinging them with our dragon. Putting a sky turtle in the bid, I guess, is fine. And exiling another land from the graveyard. Opponent has a response, potentially. A cosmic rebirth to get Ren and Rollbreaker back. I'll just keep pinging them to the face. Actually, I'll, I'll take out the Ren and Rollbreaker as well. Finding another trading grounds. And opponent flips our incubator, but we will shoot that down with our grifter. And draw discard the trading grounds. Finding another grifter is pretty nice. Taking out the Ren and Realm Breaker and keeping them on that clock. Just shooting them down with the Realm Scorcher Hellkite repeatedly. Taking, down, taking them down to 15 here. 12 if we connect next turn. And down to 7 with the open mana we'll have. Potentially 6 if we play out this Odawara. I'll keep exiling lands. Opponent plays out another Cosmic Rebirth. Bringing out their land once more. That's pretty good. That means they didn't get to get another Planeswalker out. So I'll play land for turn and swing in with a Grifter. Would I like to buff this up once? It might make the difference, so I'll go ahead and exile this Sky Turtle, buffing up our Grifter. Realistically, actually, that should have been a Marishal Crab. I forgot I had two Marishal Crabs in the graveyard. But we'll get him for another 4 damage. And our opponent goes Memory Deluge, so we should have held up that Soul Cauldron to exile this Deluge. But hopefully they don't hit too much gas off it. I think we're most scared to a farewell here. But a Beseju to take care of our cauldron is quite awkward. Yeah, I'll go ahead and hit them now, I suppose. For at least a little bit. I'll ping them for one more, I suppose. Let's see, I could take them down to eight, then swing for potentially another eight next turn, but they possibly have removal. I guess they would have used it by now, but they did draw two with the memory deluge plus whatever they drew from the top. Might have been right to bounce the cauldron as well to hand with the Odawara, but maybe going for the win here is fine. Hmm. Alright, I'll play it a little safer though, looking to hold up this Merix and clocking them that way in case they find a way to remove our Hypnotic Rifter. Okay, so... Go and activate Merix. Play land for turn, I suppose, maximizing the amount of connives we'll get. And I'll swing in, looking to buff up our Grifter. Finding a second Merix is pretty good. Too bad we played our land for turn already. So here we could potentially make it to lethal and still hold up playing the second grifter Ooh, but finding a spell pierce could be even better i guess they still have enough mana to target our grifter but if they have something like a wandering emperor then we just shut it out here oh but we tapped our last blue source meaning we'll just put away the spell pierce I 
and looking time the game here. Cosmic Rebirth to bring Beseju back. Gaining them another three life. And targeting our training grounds, I suppose. Yeah, we'll let that resolve. Still bringing them down to three health here. And I'll fold up our Grifter. Since they likely have, yep, a board wipe here. Followed up with a Shauna Purifying Blade. But thankfully we can just start generating a bunch of Merix tokens. And hopefully I'll value your opponent that way. They start getting a life here with Shauna going up to 4 with this land and then up to 7 with the swing from Shauna. And they could draw a bunch of cards as well, if they please. Drawing four cards, but we'll start making Merrick's tokens. Opponents will respond to our second activation, taking out one of our Merrick's with the Field of Ruin. And an Enigma Jewel is pretty good. Too bad we exiled that Colossal Sky Turtle earlier since this could have been a game win on its own. But I'll just go ahead and start swinging in with our Merrix's, play out this Jewel, and play out the Grifter as well. could start making two Merix tokens per turn next turn, but sadly another Field of Ruin will take us off our poison game plan for now. Opponent has no more basics to run, which is definitely why running Field of Ruin in a three color deck that also runs fetch lands is a terrible idea. Opponent hits our Grifter, and likely keeps the Shauna back. So when we find another Merix, swing with the team. And we'll actually look to flip the jewel here since that will start making two Merix tokens per turn. Exiling our Soul Cauldron as well to exile their Memory Delusion. Maybe other stuff that they could play out of the graveyard. See, so yeah, I'll do that over draw discarding with Rona. Taking them off memory deluge could be pretty significant. And I'll exile the Ren and Realm Breaker as well, as their only other sort of uh, playable card in the graveyard. Opponent moves to swing with Ashana. I'll take the damage. Drawing them a couple of cards, but getting them all the closer to dying from poison. They draw three though. And a Hypnotic Grifter as follow up. Likely seals the game. I could even use the Urn of Godfire activation here, copying it with the Locus of Enlightenment to destroy like their Shauna and maybe their other temporary lockdown. Okay, so this enters the battlefield and I think we're going to look to destroy it right here. First, getting our Merrick's token values since we're going to lose out on our Locus of Enlightenment. And yeah, I'll go ahead and destroy this. I 
Oh, I guess it doesn't get copied since we lose our Locus of Enlightenment. So a bit of a misplay, but thankfully I targeted the temporary lockdown that posed the biggest threat. Yeah, not sure where opponent could draw here. I think they're pretty dead on board. We'll swing in with the mites and yep, opponent packs it up. GG's. I think that was a pretty good showing of how good the Enigma Jewel could be in these late game situations where your uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron gets removed, which is pretty common seeing as like there's like the Seijus all over the place and Black Green could definitely threaten you. We saw it last games as well against the Temple decks though. Those are a little trickier to beat since their game plan is so quick. But yeah, thanks for watching.